But uh, today we're going to start over in James, the first chapter. I'm going to give you a lot of Bible today. Is that okay? Yes, sir. We need the Word of God. And we need the Bible. Uh, we can uh, look at a lot of things, self-help, uh, wonderful, uh, just to give you some five steps to success and all that. But I want to give you Bible. I want to tell you what Jesus said in His Word. He is the Word. Yep. Uh, and He became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory and uh, He was... Uh, God on earth, anointed of the Holy Spirit to become man, and uh, then now we are the salt of the earth, the light of the world, uh, that w the bread of life to people because we are as he is uh, in this world, and uh, that's a joy. Uh, you know, we, we talk about and we preach grace here, and we're not trying, the balance that we want to preach is not a balance of a mixture of law and grace. I'm not trying to balance out uh, the requirements of the law and mix it with a little bit of grace and say that's balanced preaching. Uh, what we want to um, do is the balance of what we ought to be doing in grace uh, and the things that we've been set free from doing. Uh, those, that's the balance the preaching is because there's some things in his word that he says we ought to do. Uh, so I told him in the first service and. Uh, I tell Matthew, you ought to go take a shower. <laughs> it's not a requirement, but we sure would appreciate it. <laughs> you ought to go take a shower. And there's so there's some things in his word that he says we ought to do. Men ought always to pray without ceasing. Okay. So we ought to be praying. And what that is is that every opportunity we pray. Now we ought to be praying and seeking the Lord. So this morning... Uh, we stole the slogan from uh, Nike, uh, but I believe uh, James 1, 122 became, came before Nike ever sh showed up. Um, and by the Lord's help, and, and his, uh, only by His Spirit, we want to minister to you today uh, seasoned with grace. So I'm not coming to you with a um, bust you in the mouth here and in your face. You just do this. I know that's not what I'm coming across with doing. But this is a, as we do these things, it becomes a natural flow of the grace of God. And we begin to do things uh, out of obedience to His Word. Just as It's just natural. It just becomes natural because of the power of the Spirit uh, that's in us and He's flowing uh, through us. And once you have experienced the love of God that was poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit through what Jesus did on the cross... Once you've experienced that, it give, it's an empowerment. It gives us an empowerment to walk out our love for Him and to uh, others. Because we don't know how to love. I, I mean, we, we just, there's no way that we can do it. We can have this uh, uh, eros, this erotica uh, love that it's a lust you know, give me, give me, give me. But to have a true love for our brothers, our sisters, for our other fellow men. It only comes because we have experienced the love of, of God. And uh, in, in 1 John, he says, God is love. Uh, in the Greek language, when you have the verb is, you can, turn, you can put the subject and the, the, the noun on the either side of that is. Love is God. So if love is God, then we jump over to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. God is patient. God is kind. God is not envious. He doesn't keep any record of wrong. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's good news. That's the gospel. Uh, we can uh, go to the bank with that. Uh, and it's, that's an amazing thing. So this morning we want to encourage you and help motivate you and prod you just a little bit to get into the Word. And as you read the Word and the Holy Spirit uh, talks to you, uh, you will begin to, to do some things out of your response uh, to what he's done for us. Amen? Uh, let me pray. Father, help me this morning uh, to share words that are grace to the hearer, uh, that will motivate our, our, my brother, my sister, uh, the saints here at Revival Worship Center. We pray that you would uh, just manifest yourself in our lives as we go about uh, doing the work of the kingdom of God to advance that kingdom. Uh, may nothing that we say today uh, make anyone feel discouraged, feel less, feel beat up uh, today. So use our mouths now and speak through us uh, your words of grace in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Okay, so uh, James, the first chapter. Now, as we've said before, uh, we just want to remind you that uh, when you take a, a verse of Scripture uh, out of context, when you take the text out of that and you try to make it your own or try to prove a point with just the text out of that and you're taking it out of context, once you've taken the text out, all you're left with is a con. Uh, and we don't want to, we're not trying to con you, so you need to take the scripture home today, look at James the first chapter, look at it from the beginning all the way down, read, even read into chapter 2, because in the beginning of chapter 2, he kind of explains a little more in depth of what he's talking about here in verses 22 through 27 of James the first chapter. And that's good, you know, told on Tuesday nights as we're studying the book of Acts right now, remind, there are no chapters and verses in the original language, it's just one big love letter. Uh, that we get in on that the Holy Spirit uh, didn't write to us, but he wrote it for us. And we get to get in on that. So James, who was the half-brother of Jesus, who's one of the disciples, is writing here. And uh, he starts off in the first few verses, you know, count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into diverse or various uh, trials and tribulations. How, how many know everybody's, uh, we're going to get that. Uh, we're all going to go through them. Uh, but he said to count it joy. Then he goes on down through there. Let's look at uh, verse 19. It's, look at it in your, your Bible where you're on your device there. And he says, Understand this, my beloved brethren. I'm reading from the Amplified. Let every man be quick to hear. We talked a few weeks ago about being better listeners. I need to be a better listener. And so he tells us to be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak slow to take offense and to get angry. Isn't it uh, something that he said slow to get angry? He said, it didn't say don't get angry. It said be slow to get angry. Because Ephesians 4.32 tells us that we can be angry and sin not. Yeah. And so there, here, look at this. The Lord, our God, our creator, has put every emotion that you could ever experience in you. He created you with those emotions. And he's not cruel. He's a good God. So why would he create you with an emotion and then say you can't express that? It's like Howard and I were talking before the service. He said, you know, it's like taking a candy bar out in front of Brandy and her favorite candy bar is Hershey's and I'm taking a bite of that and I said, smell this. Doesn't that smell good? Wouldn't you like to have a bite of that? You can't. <laughs> I mean, that's not what God, he doesn't do that. And so if he created us with that emotion, any emotion, there's a time to cry. There's a time to be happy. There's a time to dance. So we can express those uh, in, in the way that he's created us with our personalities. Uh, and he'll deal with you what the parameters of those are and, and how to uh, not sin when we get in uh, to our anger. But so be slow to anger. doesn't say you can't be angry. Hope that helps somebody. It helped me. And, uh, <laughs> and then in verse 21, or 20, he said, For man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God. Uh, righteousness of God. So, uh, 21, so get rid of all uncleanness and rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit receive and welcome the Word, capital W, Word, because it's talking about Jesus, which implanted and rooted in your hearts. When you received Jesus, the Word, it was implanted, it took root in your hearts, and now it contains the power to save your soul. And that's what his blood did when it was implanted in us. And now as we read the word, listeners, we hear the word, and it becomes more rooted and more grounded in it, it continues to save our soul. And I'm not just talking about saving you out of a devil's hell. That's great, that's wonderful, but that's just part of it. He saves us from, all, he saves us from ourselves. Uh, and that's a miraculous thing. And now let's look at our text. Now we've built a little bit here about uh, what James is talking about. We're listening to the word, Jesus. We have his written word, we, and I believe he can still speak to us. We listen to that. We're quick to listen to it uh, and slow to speak. Um, and now he's saying, but, verse 22, it's going to be on the screen from the Amplified. But be doers of the word. Uh, really, this is the uh, JRW3 version. James Roy Wright III. It really... Be intimidators of Jesus. Intimidators. Imitators of Jesus. 
Yeah, we're going to intimidate you, Jesus. <laughs> Be imitators of Jesus. Doers of the word. Imitating Christ. Imitating Christ's likeness. Imitating he was light, he was salt, he was bread. Uh, just, he never condemned, he always loved. I mean, that's being an imitator of Christ's likeness. And we're, they were first called Christians in Antioch. Why? Because they looked like, act like, smell like, talk like Jesus. Christ. And so they said, you all are Christ-like. You are Christians. Little Christ is the, the actual literal translation are, ye are little Christ. Uh, and that's what they called them in Antioch. And so if you're going to be a doer of the word, uh, it's, it's not about the actions that we do as much as it is being like him. So it's more of a being that causes us to do. Instead of getting the cart before the horse and saying, if I do this, I become that. It's I am being, because of Christ, I am a being, a Christ-like being. Now I do. So it becomes more of a response instead of a requirement. So if we put it as a requirement, then we tell people, and, we, and this happens all over the place, and I'm probably even guilty of it in the past. And now if you ever have, any, if you have anything that I preached prior to 2012, you can throw it away. Uh, but if if we look at this uh, in the context uh, that we've preached it at as across the the country for years, is we begin to manipulate people instead of motivate them, Jerry, and we're telling them now you have to do these things. If you're going to be a doer, then you're not a Christian if you don't do this and if you don't do that. And now it becomes more of these are requirements that you have to do to be saved and stay saved instead of because you are a Christian and you've placed your faith in the finished work of Christ, your response to what Christ has done is these things. And it becomes more of a natural flow out of our walking in the Spirit and not after the flesh than it is a requirement of the law. Uh, and that's so much more refreshing. That's so much, to me, it's, uh, there's more rest in that. Uh, because I, uh, man, what a, a word this morning, Don. That, that, take your hand, look at me, mommy, no hands. Take your hands off of it. Because when we step back and we take our hands off of it, he steps in and puts his hands on it. And I'd much rather have his hands on it than my hands. Because almost, not almost, everything that I've put my hands on to has be, become a mess. See, trying to be a doer, but doing it in my own power, doing it under my own strength, and doing it as a requirement of the law, saying, okay, Lord, I've done this, now you bless me, or I've done this, so uh, I'm safe one more day. You know, I did this today so I can make it to heaven tonight. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul today. <laughs> so now, as we look at these things in the context of what James is saying, we're becoming a doer, an imitator, of, of the word Jesus okay. and not merely listeners to it because if we're just listeners then we're betraying ourselves and we will fall into deception and that's contrary to Jesus contrary to the truth see truth is capitalized there speaking of Jesus so we become contrary to being imitators of Christ when we try to do it on our own strength and we're just listening so we need to be a, a doer. Our response to what Jesus has done for us is we become a doer. Turn with me real quick over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to jump right into it. Verse 11 in the King James says, And he, Jesus, gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. Now he didn't say that all are apostles and all are prophets and all are evangelists. It says some. Some are apostles, some are evangelists. That doesn't mean that all can't prophesy. Not all are prophets. I believe all of, all of us can prophesy uh, at different times. But not all are prophets. That's an office of the church that God gave. And why did he give it? Let's look at verse 12. I'm going to read it from the Amplified, Amplified Version. And why did he do this? His intention or his purpose, and Jesus' intention his purpose was for the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. So he uses, if, let's say Brother Harold's an apostle, he's using Brother Harold as an apostle to equip the saints, to bring them to per perfecting the work of the ministry. Uh, all that means is mature. doesn't mean it's perfect. 
I mean, can you imagine uh, the band up there and all Don does is drive them. If one of them misses a, a note, he cuts off a finger. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Because you know, under, yeah, because under the law, uh, it, that was a finger cutting off, eye poking out, and we don't want to talk about the rest of it. That's under that old law system. But thank God we're not looking for perfection. Yes, we do everything in excellence, in a spirit of excellence. We want to do the best that we can. Why? Because we're not doing it. They're not playing for you. The, the teachers downstairs aren't teaching for you. They're doing it as unto the Lord because we know as doers, imitators of Jesus, that he said, I only do what the Father tells me to do and I do it for his glory. So now we're, all that we do in word and in deed, it's doing it as unto the Lord. And it's just our response thanking him out of the love that, he's, that we've experienced now empowering us. Uh, to do that. And so he says there that now this fivefold office is so that the people, the church, the ones that he's consecrated, the ones that have accepted his blood and are sanctified and set apart for his use can do the work of the ministry. That's what he's given us, this for, to, that they should do the work of the ministry. And, and even though I'm a pastor, I'm still part of the body, so I do the work of the ministry. Because I have apostles over me that feed into my life I have brothers and sisters that are prophets and evangelists and teachers that feed into me that we listen to. So I'm still part of the body as well, even though I may have one of the offices there. But we still are being equipped by these offices that God has given to do what? So that we can do. Out of our response, we learn from them how to respond to what God has done, and we ought to do some certain things. The, the misconception with a lot of grace camps is that we tell you that you just don't have to do anything anymore. You're saved, you're under grace, you just don't do anything anymore. Uh, no, I don't believe in spiritual couch potatoes. Uh, I believe we still ought to assemble ourselves together because iron sharpens iron. We can uh, learn from one another and help each other grow. Uh, we still believe in seed time and harvest. We believe in, in planting seeds. We, here's one recently I'll give you. We still believe in prayer. Okay, I believe in prayer. Uh, if not, then I wouldn't have Don praying uh, uh, when he's on the platform. I wouldn't have just prayed and asked the Lord for his help and guidance. Right? We believe in prayer. Uh, and those are some of the things that we do in a response. I mean, prayer's not monologue. It's dialogue. And part of our prayer, uh, do you know that the word listen and the word silent have the same letters in it? So, you know, when we pray, yes, we praise God, we thank Him, we, we give Him our grocery list, if you will, but then we have to step back and listen, be silent so we can hear Him. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, <laughs> Matt, poor guy, he's not here today, but they're telling Matthew's got his first job, he's working at, at the pool in the concession stand. They said he's a good worker, that made me proud, he's a hard worker, but he's loud. <laughs> you know, he's 14. And they closed the concession stand one hour before they closed the pool. And so they were closing the concession stand. It's five after six, and he's trying to mop the floors and get it clean. And people were coming in. And he said, we're closed. Get out of here. <laughs> That's, that sounds a like a, a lot of preachers today. There's, there wasn't any grace in that. That was just in your face, slap you upside of the head. And, and he's immature. He's, he's learning. Uh, his first job, glad he's a hard worker. But sometimes I have to say, Matthew, hush so your supervisor or I can tell you what you need to do and sometimes we're too busy slow to speak James said here well because we're talking we don't listen we do have to listen it doesn't say we don't listen we're quick to listen and then as we hear then we respond to what we do is this a little bit better than the first time around she's such a help to me because sometimes my personality is just I'm a coach you know, and when you coach, you grab a guy by the face mask and you just shake him and rattle his bell and say, what are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> That's what we can't, I don't want to do that because you're not idiots. You're, you're born again, God filled, cleansed by the blood believers and we need to be encouraged. So, and we do, we just do it. But what we're doing is a response, not a, a driving force that if I don't do these things, 
I'm cursed, my bumper's going to fall off, I'm going to have two flat tires on the way home. Uh, we used to hear that preaching, didn't we? You're, if you don't give this morning, your car's going to be in the swamp when you go. <laughs> I love that man. Now turn back to James, the first chapter with me. We looked at verse 22, now let's look at verse 23. For if anyone only, key word here is only, okay, if only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer without responding to it, if all you hear is, uh, you know, listen, 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 but you're not responding to what you're hearing, what are we hearing? We're, we're hearing good news. We're giving you good news. We're preaching the gospel. So you're hearing good news. You're hearing encouraging, edifying words. And it's building you up. Uh, but now we need to be a doer, obeying it. If you're only listening, then here's what it's like. It's like a man or a woman who looks carefully at his own natural face. Uh, one translation says his own reflection in a mirror. Verse 24, for he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like, what he looks like. Anybody ever done that? Man, sometimes I go to the mirror and I think when I'm going to get there, for some reason I've got hair. <laughs> and then I look in the mirror and I say, my Lord, I don't have any hair. And then you turn around and walk away and I think I've got hair again. JJ, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> now, the... Man, there's got some mirrors out there that are deceptive. There's some mirrors out there that will make me look thin. I like those mirrors, and we've got them all over our house. But there's other mirrors out there that will make you seem a little bit larger than life. And I believe a lot of times what we're hearing, the, the message that's being presented to us, are like those mirrors. There's some mirrors that will make us look thinner than what we are. Some will distort us and we'll get puffed up and we think, oh man, I'm that big. And so there's some distorted views. That's why we've got to get into the Word, Jesus. And when, when we look at the Word, what we're seeing is a reflection of Christ. He's the Word, right? So when you open up the Word, you're looking into a mirror. And when you look into that mirror, you're, you're seeing the reflection of Christ. That's why we can jump back, and if you didn't hear it last week, I encourage you to get the message that we preached. It's out there on our YouTube page, the compound anointing. Because it, what, what we're dealing with there is Matthew, the 16th chapter, where Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And they said a bunch of things, and then he presses them a little bit more, and he said, but who do you say that I am? And then Simon gets a revelation uh, divine revelation from God and he says thou art the Christ the Messiah the son of the living God in the message Bible Jesus says God bless you Simon bar Jonah son of John because you didn't read that in a book and nobody taught you that it, and it's as Paul says in Galatians 6 it was a divine revelation a direct revelation and it doesn't stop there. When, Paul, when Peter received a revelation of who Jesus is, then Jesus says, now I'm going to tell you who you are, who you really are. You're Rock. Rock Johnson. <laughs> you were Simon Pebble. But now you have a revelation of who I am, and you're a rock. And then he goes on to say, because of that revelation, the two revelations of who I am, and now you have a revelation of who you are, you have the keys to unlock and un the kingdom. The doors will begin to open for you because you have a revelation of who Jesus is. And you're The rest of this message, as we get into it, you'll see this a, a little bit uh, more clearly, that the reason we don't love one another, we can't without the, experiencing the love of Christ, is most of us, have we've had a very difficult time loving ourselves. We've grown up with low self-esteem. Uh, there's certain uh, ways that uh, society communicates to young people 
that they should wear certain things and buy their shoes from a certain store and uh, you know drink this kind of drink and have this kind of haircut and when they don't then they're criticized and ridiculed over that and then we some of you maybe even in your own own homes you were never built up and and encouraged and patted on the back for succeeding in certain areas of life and and so you've had a low self-esteem and with that low self-esteem they've grown up and we've not loved ourselves but the scripture clearly communicates to us that we love our neighbor a response to the love of God that we've experienced that's a response we just just do it out of a natural flow but the reason that we don't flow a lot of times in that is because we've not loved ourselves because he says we love our neighbor as we love our ourselves and we have you know I grew up Carol good to see you in a circle where we you know it was all about uh, killing flesh every day and we got so concentrated on killing the flesh that it became to a point that we couldn't even love ourselves because we didn't love ourselves because we we're too busy trying to kill us kill ourselves uh, you, you know and and when you do that then you have a false sense of humility you become very fake trying to present a certain thing uh, to others uh, we had a pastor call us uh, this week and he he wanted to ask me some questions about specific uh, scriptures and uh, I said brother you know isn't such and such your mentor why, why aren't you calling such and such you know over this situation and asking their opinion in this scripture and, and the bottom line is he knew if he asked certain questions in this direction that he would be condemned and put down because he may not have lined up 100% with the way that person believed it. But he knew that if he called us by God's grace and only because of what the Lord's uh, revealed in us, we're nothing special, but we have a revelation of God's grace and we're still learning and going deeper with that. But he realized and understood that if he called us, that it didn't matter what he particularly viewed in that scripture. By God's grace, we were going to love him. We are going to say, that I'm thankful for that revelation that God's given you. And he knew that we would go back and begin to look at it see if God showed us something different but it was it was a joy joy to share with him uh, we don't line up 100% on a lot of things but he knows one thing for sure I love him and I know he loves me uh, and so when we begin to flow in that and we can't do that that's just a response of the love of God that we've experienced so what James was telling us here if we'll look at verse 23 continue to look at 24 we go off and we forget about it if we're listeners only verse 25 says but if you look carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty. Now let me tell you something. Look at it real clear, clearly here. I like the Amplified. The faultless law. That's not Old Covenant law. Because the Old Covenant law was fault, it had, had faults in it. Oh yeah, good news. This is the faultless law. It's the law of liberty. It's the new commandment that Jesus gave. He said, Brian, uh, give a new commandment unto you that you love one another. And that's written on our hearts by the Holy Ghost and so if we look into this faultless law of liberty and as, uh, if we look at the faithfulness of God uh, it and we persevere in looking into it that means we continue to look at it we don't go to other sources we look into the same mirror being not a heedless listener who forgets but an active doer who, be, who obeys who continues to imitate Christ he shall be blessed in his doing his his life of obedience now that little quotation his life of obedience right there is not mine and your obedience it's his obedience because he was obedient even to the death the death of the cross and thank God for his because without Jesus' obedience none of us would be here today because if he hadn't obeyed there wouldn't have been a cross and without a cross Don there was no finished work and without a finished work you and I are most men miserable but he finished the work he obeyed and we can continue to look into his obedience and when we continue to look in his, into his obedience we know that God sees us as he saw his son and he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased jump real quick to Romans the 13th chapter and then I'm going to come back to James and we're going to wrap it up I know we've gone a little bit longer today but worship was good verse 8 Romans 13 and really, you know, I'm, I'm really comfortable and relaxed. I don't feel any pressure 
to just keep on going, so I'm thankful. Keep out of debt. That's a different story. Except for owe no man anything but love. Love one another. That's the only thing that we owe each other. For he who loves his neighbor, who practices loving others, has fulfilled the law. Who loved his neighbor more than anybody else? Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend, his neighbor. And so God fulfilled the law through the love of Jesus when he gave his life for us on Calvary. And so the law has been fulfilled. Verse 9, I'm going to skip over verse 9, go to verse 10. Love does no wrong to one's neighbor. It never hurts anybody. Therefore, love meets all of the requirements and is the fulfilling of the law, capital L, referring to the laws of Moses handed down by God on the stone tablets. So the fulfilling of the, the law, not talking about the faultless law because we look at Christ when we look at the faultless law of love, the law of liberty. But the law that demanded was fulfilled and supplied through Christ. And now because we've experienced that, we can say, just do it. Just respond to the love of God. I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, I'm going to leave the, what I've finished the last service with for another message altogether on the lettuce. But we're going to wrap it up. Verse 27 of James 1. Don, if you want to come and just play a little bit. External religious worship, that's religion as it is expressed in outward acts, that is pure and unblemished in the sight of God the Father is this. Now watch. This is pure religion in the sight of God. To visit and help and care for the orphans. And I was reminded that the orphans here is not just those physically without a mother and father. All of us were orphans. We were all orphans. But now we're sons. So true religion is when the orphans, those without a father or a mother, come to be sons. That's only done through the experiencing and accepting the love of Christ. So this is all, it all comes back to just do it means when we become doers of the word, we are responding to what God has done through Christ in us. And the widows. <laughs> It, you know, the law said if you were, a, if you were, let's say, divorced, as long as your husband was still alive, you couldn't marry another. And so a widow means that her husband has died, watch me, and now she has a right to marry another. Who was your first husband, spiritually? Adam. The first Adam. And the most of the church is still married to that first Adam, trying to work and toil and labor because of his sin. He said, you shall work the sweat of your brow to bring forth a harvest. That's the only way you're going to save yourself is working and toiling and laboring. And it was an abuse spouse syndrome. And so many people still love that abuse spouse syndrome. But Adam has died. Romans tells us this the fifth chapter and also chapter seven now I'm free to marry another. so the widow here is us <laughs> this is good as we respond to the love of God and we experience that that empowers us now to go tell people the widows Adam's dead you're free to marry another his name is Jesus because we are when we accept him what are we we're the bride of Christ so you're free to love, you're free to marry another. And so the true religion in the sight of God, yes, I believe it's taking care of orphans and if you can't go, take care of them, sending finances to support those who can go. I do believe that if we have widows in our church, we help put roofs on them. That's all part of the gospel. But there's a deeper meaning here that tells us that true religion is when we've experienced, Mark, the love of God, our response to that is we want to go tell all the other orphans and widows, you can be a son and you're free to marry another. Whew. 
<laughs> that excites me. And, and when we've done this, we are the bride of Christ and we're, on, we're unspotted and we're uncontaminated from the world. Widows and orphans, we're free to marry another. Would you stand? I trust that you were encouraged and helped today.